Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy, gaming, and in this episode, um, we are going to... Our, uh, my main goal is to at least get started with um, setting up a defense platform in Hatikva's Choice uh, at the Xenon Gate. I don't know if we're going to get... How, how close we're going to get to that in this episode, but... Uh, that is kind of my next ma major goal, you know, to work on. <coughs> Excuse me, but I have a lot of stuff to get you guys caught up on. Um, due to a, a few in real life uh, interruptions, I, I had previously started recording this episode, uh, but I, I got interrupted a few times, and also the decision to let the game, you know, run AFK for a while kind of got me messed up in terms of you know sequence of events so i decided well i'm just gonna i'm just gonna scrap pretty much almost everything we i recorded and start from here so lots to get you caught up on like i said first thing is that we now have seta look at that isn't that awesome Woohoo! um so you guys know from the previous episode or ep episode or two i think it actually was the last episode that I, f I finally got all the components uh, to make the SETA drive uh, or the SETA device. And of course, for those of you who may not know what that does, it speeds up time. So yeah, I can just sit here and let it run and then the game just runs faster. So it's a time compression thing. So we got that done. Um, and for those of you, again, for those of you who may not know, you, ba you craft that at the crafting bench at the trader. And I did save a little bit of the footage doing that, as well as some footage of me selling some uh, Spacefly caviar and some extra components that we had. Um, and we made we made a cool eight million on doing that just alone. Uh, so here's here's just some real quick footage of that for those of you who may want to see it. Uh, in fact, this is the first time I've crafted anything at all ever in X4. We didn't have crafting in the older versions. Okay, so we need the... Oh, I've got two of those. Okay. Um, well, let's, we'll sell the other one, then we might as well. Get the flux capacitor. That thing took me so long to find. But we finally, finally found it. And the programmable field array. Oh my goodness, we got 22 of those. Wow, that's going to make us some money. <clears throat> um, now, I also want to take whatever space fly eggs I have... And we'll make some of the caviar, and that stuff sells for a lot of money, too. We got 86. I don't, I don't know how much it costs, but we'll figure that out. All right, so we'll confirm that. Now let's go back to the trader. Okay, so set a craft item. There we go. All right, we finally have a set of drive after, I don't know, hundreds of hours in this playthrough. Uh, for space fly eggs, it looks like we can, uh, or caviar rather, looks like it takes 25. So we can craft three. Okay, there we go. Now, if we go over to this dude. Can I help? Pirate Station Hauler 5. Yeah, he'll be fine. Uh, okay, so show me your wares. Here you go. And we should be able to sell, yeah, look at that. Over 1 million for sp space fly caviar. We can sell three of those. Fantastic, okay. Now, I have no idea if I need these programmable field arrays for other things, but they're, they're pretty easy to come by comparatively because as you can see, we have 21 additional uh, of those. And then, um, uh, yeah, we have that extra damaged Singularity engine. That's also extremely rare. You know what? Let's hang on to that for the moment. So we're already going to make $6.8 million just by selling this stuff. Okay, so um, now next thing to update you on. I have purchased, and I did tell you guys I was going to do this in the last episode. Uh, I have purchased a, an uh, Odysseus E. So let's teleport to our Odysseus. Well, actually, hold on. Before we teleport to the Odysseus E, let's start with the ship that I'm currently in. 
Uh, I finally made rep with the Vigor Syndicate. Uh, in fact, it happened pretty quickly by putting that level three trader in their system and, and just having him um, advance auto trade. So we are now at, let's take a look at that really quick, actually. Uh, we are now uh, plus 11 with Vigor Syndicate. And the reason I did that is that I wanted to get access to the She Fighter. Uh, which we now have access and I have I am actually in the she fighter so this is what it looks like in the cockpit and then uh, I've got bolt casters installed on it at the moment um, and then this is uh, what it looks like externally uh, it's the she fighter is is kind of a pieced together fighter and there's a reason for that and that's because the vigor syndicate you know basically relied on on a salvage a lot of salvage and you know uh, coupling parts together i guess uh to make their ships and so this definitely has that look but don't let the looks fool you i've, I've spent quite a bit of time doing comparisons both in game on rogi's x4 website and also watching videos like from um captain collins and jk ninja and I have come to the conclusion, uh, as at least Captain Collins did too, and, and again, I didn't just take his word for it, I did some own, my own comparing, that this ship is probably overall the best fighter in the game. And the reason for that is because it's very, has very high shields, has a very fast shield recharge rate, um, like almost about three times faster than my second favorite all, uh, overall fighter in the game, which we'll talk about in a second. It's got four guns. Um, it's a bitter, uh, a little bit more on the slow side, but it is a heavy fighter, so uh, it's not, you know, it's not um, re uh, unreasonably slow for its role. And it's not super terribly expensive either. So all those things combined means that I think this is going to be our... Uh, heavy frontline fighter for the rest of this playthrough and I did purchase the blueprint for it too uh, so that we can manufacture it ourselves when the time comes uh, so yeah so that's the she fighter I, I only own one right at the moment because I wanted to you know build one and, and try it out but uh, we will probably be seeing a lot more of these uh, as time goes on now my second favorite heavy fighter in the game is the chimera um, the Chimera has serious firepower, and it's very fast, but it's not as tough as the She. And it's also more expensive. It's, I mean, it's it's a little bit difficult to gauge exactly how much more expensive it is, um, because, you know, if you're going to compare apples to apples, but overall, you know, we can expect to pay anywhere from a half a million to a million more for the Chimera over the She. So my thought is down the road, once we get, you know, we start getting into the big carriers, is that we have um, some frontline squadrons of she's that will go in and, you know, take out the smaller fighters. And then we'll have a bomber squadron of chimeras that will send to take, you know, to take out the larger ships. Uh, so that's kind of what I have in mind, you know, when the time comes. We, we're certainly not there yet. Now, uh, also... For light fighters, and when I say light fighters, I guess I mean normal fighters. I'm not talking about interceptors. Again, watching videos, doing comparisons, I am still hands down a fan of the Nodan fighter because it's fast. It's, per, it's, it's probably cheaper than all the other comparable options. So it's inexpensive, comparably speaking. Um... And it, it, the other thing I like about it is, you know, we build that at the Allied docks, which means we can we have access to some of the other races' equipment right there at the dock. So the light fighters, what I'm calling the light fighters and the normal fighters, uh, we're going to continue to use the Nodan, and those are going to be the escorts, you know, for the trader ships and, you know, for the, the larger uh, destroyers and those kinds of ships to help protect them against other fighters. Um, and I need to actually go get the blueprint uh, for that too, because eventually I'm going to be producing all these ships myself. I don't want to rely upon the other races because of the fact that, for one thing, they could get wiped out by the Xenon, though we're going to try and prevent that from happening. But, you know, I just want to be self sufficient and be able to, um, you know, provide that ourselves. Okay, so next. We, um, uh, uh, by the way, I'm at 109 million in, uh, in money. And. If we go here 
and just pull that in. Uh, so now we're at 114. I think I mentioned this in the last episode, but in case I did not, my station is is asking for 120 million operating budget. And the reason it's doing that is because I'm currently researching this last um, level of teleportation. And uh, so when, when you activate this, the station asks for a, a lot more money in order to get this stuff. So it's slowly, you know, gathering the resources to, to, to do this. Um, and so once that's finished, though, uh, and, you know, if we're not researching anything at all, then the operating budget is more like around 20 million. And then all the rest of that money will go back into our wallet. And I don't think it's going to it's actually going to use that money. That's just a projection that it's it thinks that it needs. So I just give it to it. OK, so we're doing good on money. Our net worth at the moment is uh, 529 million and change. So we're doing pretty good money wise for where we're currently at. I uh, don't know that there's anything else to update you on as far as reputation goes. It, may, it was mostly the bigger syndicate that I was grinding for. Once this level three pilot finished getting us to, to uh, level 10, uh, then I sent them to Terran space and I kept them in the smaller ship just because they'll be able to trade more quickly and get that rep up higher. Once we get to 20 with the Terran Protectorate, um, I might switch that pilot over to a big ship. Um, but we are also, you know, we're also going to be discovering the free families here pretty, pretty soon too. And then we're going to need to grind rep with them, which shouldn't take too long. In fact, if they have gates next to a Xenon sector, I'll probably just do that myself by blowing up the Xenon because that is hands down the fastest way uh, to get the rep with these guys. <laughs> If you're, you know, if you're going to do it yourself. Okay. So anyway, let's see here. I, what are we doing? We're going here. Okay. So I have purchased an Odysseus E. I like the Odysseus E much better than the normal Odysseus in terms of its looks. And I, d I don't think there's a huge difference between the two in terms of their performance. If you're comparing apples to apples. Uh, so let's teleport to our new Odysseus. And the reason that I got this ship. The primary reason I got this ship is because uh, if it's it's got really, really long range. It's like I got a 10 kilometer range on the main battery. OK, and so that means we can stay at a safe distance and blow up K's and stations um, and not worry about getting attacked at all from main guns. Um, it's pretty maneuverable for a destroyer, you know, an L class ship. And yeah, so those, those suckers will reach out and touch somebody from 10 kilometers away compared to our rattlesnake, which is like 6.4 or something. Now, obviously, the rattlesnake has way more firepower um, than this. But the idea, you know, that we can just sit back out of range and blast down a station, it's going to take longer. Uh, it, uh, well, it would take longer if this is all we used. Um, is is just it's just going to be a good way to go. And again, I love the look of the ship. This is po quite possibly my favorite ship in terms of aesthetics. Um, here, let's do this. It's just so cool looking. I'm not a huge fan of the big fin thingy at the bottom, but it's okay. Um, but I just I don't know. There's something about this ship that just really does it for me. And we may be getting more of these in the future. I don't know. It's got an, uh, one M-class dock and two small docks. And I think it can also, uh, you know, hold some fighters in the bay and that sort of thing, too. That's not really its main role. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, turrets on this. I have a combination set up of... Let's take a look at the loadout. Uh, I did both some beam and bolt turrets for the, for the mediums. I have two forward plasma turrets, but the third L turret is behind the ship and behind that little fin thing I just talked about, so it, you, it can't fire forward. So I said, all right, well, then let's just put an L beam turret on this because then it'll help with fighters that might get behind the ship. And then, the, again, the medium turrets are a mixture of beam and bolt turrets. And I'm probably going to swap that out on the rattlesnake, too, and put some bolt turrets on it and not just have all beam turrets. Okay. Uh, so that is our uh, um, our Odysseus. Now, I have also, um, let's see here. I've also purchased a dragon and a katana. Uh, so let's, let's go take a look at the dragon next. 
As to be expected, you know, with any split ship, this Dragon. Corvette is just a monster when it Hello. comes to speed and firepower. But, you know, again, being a split ship, it's uh, it's weak. It, it, it's defensively really weak, but it's got six main guns, and I currently have disintegrators in them. And so, you know, when you're bearing down on a P with six disintegrators all going at the same time, they don't last very long. And, and I like the disintegrators because of the fact that they damage both shield and hull, and they're very effective against surface elements on, you know, on, uh, like, Ks and, well, stations, anything, any surface element. So I just feel like, you know, they're not necessarily going to be the absolute baddest-ass guns out there, but they serve multiple ro roles, and as long as you have enough of them, which we do, uh, it's still going to melt a P pretty darn quickly. Um, so, yeah, we got the dragon. And then I also have uh, purchased a katana, which is, the katana is very expensive, but um, it is a joy to fly. The katana is very maneuverable. It's got amazing katana. shields. They're Terran shields. Um, and it's got just blinding fast acceleration and boost the boost and on this thing is just crazy fast uh, which means you can get it you know get out of a scrap uh, much more quickly the travel drive is amazingly fast this sucker goes almost 5,000 meters per second which for a Corvette is <laughs> fast but you know besides all of that it's just uh, it, it's it's super maneuverable it's it's just I don't know it's very fun to fly uh, it's not as powerful as the Dragon offensively because it's only got four weapons and I currently have Terran Pulse Lasers on there. I mean, they do the job, but I might change them out for something later. And then I have two Argon Flak Turrets that I fitted on the uh, on the ship for, for Flak Turrets. Uh, but I just really like the ship. It, I, I just, it, it's fun to fly um, and it's tough as all get out because of the shields. So, you know, at some point, we will start mass producing ish uh you know medium combat ships corvette ships probably mostly if not entirely um and i'll you know i'll have to decide at what point which one we want to do now you know buying from the other races right now the katana is hands down the most expensive it's like very very expensive but if we buy the blueprints and start making it ourselves then it, it, that's not going to matter because it's just going to be the cost of the parts so, you know, Dragon hits hard and fast, also fun to fly, but pretty weak. Whereas this thing can take a, a big beating, but it's not going to, you know, tear stuff down quite as quickly as the Dragon. And then, you know, the Nemesis, which I still very much love, is kind of in between the two, really, if you, if you think about it. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, so I think that updates you on all of the new ship purchases that I've made. Let's see, we talked about getting Seta and rep with uh, Vigor Syndicate. So I believe that catches us up on everything I wanted to get you guys caught up on. Now, um, uh, we, what I want to do is I want to... Oh, I know what we're going to do next, actually. Uh, we're going to make a big purchase next. What we're going to do is we're going to buy our own builder because we have a lot of building in our future. And I just want to, you know, uh, ha whoa, he's, that guy's coming right for us. Uh, maybe we're coming right for him. <laughs> it's a Tilati ship. He's not going fast at all. Um, anyway, yeah, I want to get our own builder. We're going to need it. And what I have decided upon is the Paranid Builder. If we go to here and add extra large ship... And we go to the yeah we, gotta, yeah we gotta go down here Heracles so let's do the Heracles yeah actually you know what? I don't think the Sentinel's available to us yet because we haven't gotten to 20 with Holy Order or maybe it is well, hold on a second maybe they do let you get the builder let's go down to Holy Order here
Yes, they they will give us the builder. Okay, so um, actually, while we're on this screen, I have a. Oh, I thought I had a, a preset for this. Well, here, let's just make it really quick. So uh, we're just going to give it the all around drive. There's very, very little difference between these two, and this is more expensive. Um, for now, we'll keep the Paradin Shield on it, though we might swap that out for Talati Shields later on. Uh, we're just going to give it the cheapest thruster because this ship is not about maneuverability. Um, that's the only option we have for shields. For turret groups, what I would actually probably do with this is... Let's see, we have eight turrets, and right now it's got tracking turrets on it. I mean, it might not be a bad idea to, to use some tracking turrets. Um, the only thing I don't like about that is then we have to, you know, restock missiles. But it would definitely make the ship a little more tough. Though this isn't really a ship that I'm going to send off by itself into enemy territory. It's always going to be protected. Um, So let's just do kind of like we did with the destroyers we're going to do two beam turrets and two bolt turrets for now just so it has some protection okay um now for software it doesn't need a docking computer well actually you know what it's not that expensive let's just give it a mark two in case i do decide to fly it once in a while uh doesn't need a long range scanner doesn't need a police scanner I don't know if the targeting computer matters for turrets or not, so I'm just going to leave it on there. And it doesn't look like I have the option of taking the trading extension off. Okay, whatever. Um, don't care about Marines on this ship, so we'll just give it a normal service crew. And then for consumables, we'll remove all of the missiles. All right, 22 repair drones. Let's give it... Let's give it like, it's such a big ship. Let's give it 30 repair drones. And then the rest will be building drones. We'll give it a couple satellites to carry around just in case we might need them at some point. Uh, maybe like 10 nav beacons and 10 resource probes. Not even really sure why I'm doing that to be honest with you because we this is not the ship we would use to set those things. But, you know what, we'll keep them anyways. Um, we are going to give it laser towers, though. Let's give it, like, 50 laser towers. I mean, that in and of itself is going to, as long as we have some time to prepare anyways, it's going to help protect it significantly. And it's got countermeasures. Okay, so let's save this. All right, now, so the price of this ship, as we configured it, is 20, uh, 20 million, okay? So keep that in mind because I'm going to show you if we go back to the map I think just about every other builder ship is significantly more expensive. Uh, so for example if we went to Terran and we got the Kyushu and I already have a, a preset similar. You can see what I have over here. But look at the price on this. 32.6 million for that sucker. Okay. Um, I don't know. I didn't see anything very, you know, blindingly obvious between these ships. I mean, you know, that makes one that much better than the other. But if we did compare. Let's go to the encyclopedia. All right, so if we compare our where was it? Heracles. Heracles Sentinel. Okay. So add that and then let's compare uh we'll add the Kyushu with my preset. Okay, so if you look at this, the Kyushu definitely has 
significantly more shields, but it has less haul. It's even slower. Um, can hold fewer drones. The units are drones, if you didn't know that. So, I mean, but it's it's almost twice the price. Uh, 20, well, not almost twice. It's about 40%, 35 to 40% more expensive. So the only thing we're really getting out of here is better shields. But remember, this is not a ship I'm going to send into a combat zone. It's going to be very well protected when we use it. Um, so they both would be good. It's just that this is so much more expensive. So that because of that reason more than almost anything else, I'm just not a fan of the Kaiushu, you know, versus the Heracles. Okay, now let's also look at a couple of other options. So I did a build out on the Mammoth uh, Sentinel, I think. Oh, maybe I didn't. Okay, well, let's just go with a high preset for a second. So the Mammoth, again, is going to have more shields, quite a bit less hull, way less drones. And remember, drones are super important for a building ship, uh, the builder drones in particular. Uh, so if we look at... I, I think I did a mam... I must have done a Mammoth Vanguard um, preset. Yeah, I did. Okay, so let's just look at what I did with the Vanguard. So it's basically the same. It's a little less than the Sentinel. Okay, so, but let's look at the price of the Mammoth compared to the Heracles, right? So if we go to Argon Prime, I'm not even sure if a Mammoth van, uh, Sentinel is even available to us. Oh, never mind, it is. Maybe it's the Vanguard that's not available to us. Do the high preset. Look at the price on that thing. 34 million. So it's the in the, within the same price range as the Terran ship. Uh, let's just make, you know, for fairness here, let's just make sure that we're putting, you know, the same basic stuff on here. Uh, so one beam, one bolt, one beam, one bolt. Right? Beam, bolt, beam, bolt. Okay, so we got that done. Uh, software, I think, is... We did switch those two out. I think we did, like, 25 maybe repair drones. 75... Look at that, though. We have way less builder drones than we do on the other ship, so that's already a thing. Uh, we put 50 laser towers on, which is pretty expensive. But all we're doing is making the ship even more expensive. Well, no, that's not true. I guess we are... Oh, well, okay. Hold on a sec. Uh, and crew. Okay, so now we're... Now we actually are at a comparable price to... The Heracles. So... Let's save this. I I must have... I don't know. I, I made some kind of mistake there because I thought this was going to be a lot more money. Just double checking things here. Oh, uh, we did put some satellites on the other one, but that's just not going to be that much expensive or that expensive. I think we put 50 maybe. And we did like 10 of these. And 10 of these. Okay. Overwrite the loadout. Okay, so yeah, 21.7 million. So this is definitely comparable to the Heracles price-wise. Let's do the comparison in the encyclopedia. So we want to reset this to my new high preset confirm okay so now we have two ships here that are almost exactly the same price we have just a tiny bit more shields on the mammoth but quite a bit less hull so 
So Heracles definitely wins out there. Um, the rest of this stuff, the shields are negligibly. This is neg negligible. Bleed bleh, better, but not not enough to really make me blink an eye. It's slower. Um, and again, it has less drones for the same price. So so the Heracles still is better, in my opinion, than the Mammoth Sentinel. Okay. Um. So let's get rid of that. I also did an elephant. Let's take a quick look at an elephant here. Preset. High preset. Confirm. Okay. Um, elephant has... Again, shields and hull are, are comparable. A little bit faster, but who cares for this ship? Uh, but less drones. I can tell you right off the the bat though that the elephant is quite a bit more expensive than the Heracles but let's just look at it to make sure because I was a little mistaken about the mammoth's price um, so if we go up to Zyarth and we do XL elephant builder high preset OG yeah see we're at 25 million so it's a little more expensive less drones and uh, so again Heracles still is the winner so far. Okay, what else did we look at? I think we looked at Talati. So we've looked at Terran, we've looked at Argon, and we've looked at Split. So let's do a Talati comparison. I hope you guys are cool with this. I know we're not doing a lot of action, but this is part of the game, and I, I really enjoy you know trying to figure and discover all this stuff. Um, so, this is the Talati's and Albatross. I don't remember if I did a Vanguard or a Sentinel. Let's see if I got a preset for the Sentinel. I don't. High preset on the Sentinel. Yeah, let's just do a Vanguard then. Because I think, you know, for this comparison... No, not a Mammoth. What are we doing? Albatross, Vanguard. I like the way the Albatross looks, though, actually. High preset OG. Okay, so let's do the comparison. Okay, so fairly significantly less haul. Not that much more shielding. Don't really... Uh, quite a bit slower, but, you know, Talati, right? It does, however, actually have more drones. Quite a bit more, in fact. And can hold more crew. It's just so damn slow, though. And, you know, the the sm the less haul is a little bit worrisome, too. Let's see what it costs. Let's see what an Albatross Vanguard with my preset costs. So we would purchase that. Profit Center, Alpha, XL... Albatross Vanguard Builder, High Preset OG. Uh, it's still in the same price range. I don't know why those were coming up so much more expensive. Unless prices in the game have changed. I mean, that was a while ago game time. I do like the way this ship looks, though. It kind of looks like a builder ship. Well, I might want to reconsider then. Um, and the only thing we need here is is 25 advanced electronics which is easy peasy lemon squeezy tell you what let's do why don't we do a let's throw in a sentinel which we would get from 18 billion from ministry Start with a high preset. Go with the all-around engine, the cheapest thruster engine. The shields are what they are. Uh, turrets, one beam, one bolt, one beam, one bolt. Okay, uh, software like that. 
Consumables. This is where this ship actually might win me over because of the fact that it can have more drones. Uh, it's got 34 repair drones. Let's bump that down to 30. And wow, look at that. 213 building drones. Now, I guess the thing is, though, is can it use all of those at the same time? I don't know the answer to that. Assuming that it can, it's going to build stuff faster, obviously. All right, let's give it its 50 satellites, which I'll probably never use. <laughs> it's 10 nav beacons, which I'll probably never use. Resource beacons, 50 Mark II laser towers, and it's got its flares. We'll do the crew and save this as high preset OG for the Sentinel. How did that price go down? Since when is a Sentinel cheaper than a Vanguard? Unless the price pricing just changed again. All right, well, let's forget about the pricing for the moment since we know they're all gonna be within range. Let's do an XL. Do a Albatross of Sentinel with my preset. So the Sentinel's gonna have more hull, um, to be, which is to be expected because it's a Sentinel. The rest of that stuff doesn't really matter. It's slow as hell. Oh, wow, look at that. The Sentinel can have even more drones. Um, did we... Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, that's just like showing everything there. Software. Oh, we can't do a consumables comparison here. Okay. I don't know. I, I must have been drunk or something. <laughs> I did that previous comparison because I could have sworn the Heracles was way less money than all of the rest of them, but I obviously didn't compare something correctly. All right, let's take one last look uh, before we make our final decision. So, buy ships, XL, Heracles, Vanguard. Um, no, not the Vanguard. We want the Sentinel. Heracles Sentinel. I preset OG. Yeah, so it's still right around 20 million. Love the look of this ship because, you know, parroted. You know, one thing I didn't look at actually on the other ship is docks. This can dock one medium and one small. It can have, it can hold 10 mediums and 10 S's in the hull though. Double checking all of this. This is maxed out. Okay, so yeah, we're 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 sitting at twenty million for the Heracles Sentinel. And it can dock one medium and one S ship. But honestly, I think price between the Heracles and the Albatross is is close enough to where it's not really a big deciding factor for me. It's the ship that I think is going to be the be do the best job. Okay, so this is the same. This can also dock one medium and one small in the same capacity. So that that stays the same. And the nice thing about, wait, did we already select that loadout? 
Yeah, we did. Okay. It is actually cheaper too, like like about three million cheaper. I mean, three million is three million, right? And it holds more drones. We can build it right now. We don't need anything, when any parts. It's got, it's got everything it needs. So I'm thinking we go with this. Let's do it. There we go, and it's already building. We don't even have to wait. Uh, if did we have to wait for this one? I don't. I don't remember. I think it needed something, didn't it? XL, Heracles Sentinel. Yeah, see, it needed over almost 8,000 whole parts. <laughs> so there you go. Um, all right, so I feel good about that. I think we did our homework and we made we made a good decision. Even though my previous homework was, uh, you know, a, somehow or another, like totally wrong, but whatever. And again, there's the, there's our comparison. Let me just make sure that this is high preset OG comparison. So, yeah, th this is just, we have almost a hundred more drones in the Albatross than we do the Heracles. It's just going to be slow, but you know, what can you, what can you do? A little better shields, a little less haul, not not significantly different as far as that goes okay we got ourselves a builder ladies and gentlemen <laughs> it took me a long time to go through uh okay so the next order of business then is that um we are gonna assemble a fleet we have two destroyers we have three corvettes we have a bunch of fighters and we're going to take that fleet to Hatikva's Choice 1 and park it in front of this gate and and basically set up a blockade. I'll probably throw some laser towers down too. And, you know, keep the Xenon under control so that we can bring our builder over here and build our first defense platform. I also, by the way, set up satellites here I did a whole pathway of satellites all the way through Tharkas Cascade, um, just so we can see, you know, what's coming from the other side. I really, uh, the ship, any ships coming from like the stations in here are going to kind of be coming more from this direction. So I might actually place some satellites over this way too, just to give us a little bit of advanced warning. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about. Family Zen because you know the Xenon are definitely working on encroaching in here so once we get set up on this side with the defense platform we're probably going to take our fleet all the way up to Family Zen destroy the Xenon that are there and put a defense platform on this side and essentially what by doing that we're, we're blocking them into Tharkas Cascade 15 there and maybe later on down the road, we'll go into Tharkas Cascade and, and just annihilate them completely. Um, but what that does is it traps them in here and lets us, uh, you know, then we don't have to worry about, because, you know, I don't want the split to get taken over by the Xenon. We we uh, we purchase stuff from them. Um, and from a role-playing perspective, we're on good terms with them. So we're their allies, you know, so there's that too, of course. And yeah, so that's kind of what is coming up. I've got to do a lot of preparation work to get that going so I think what I'm gonna do is do that off camera because you I've given you the general idea of what I want to do and when I am ready to move out or no e even I, when when I get the fleet to hit Hatikva's choice and we're oh there's a K and we get ready to stage here that's when I will start the next episode. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to load up my freighter with hull parts, claytronics, and solar cells because we know just off the bat we're going to need that stuff. We're going to need other things too, but, um, you know, at least we can kind of get things started uh, and the freighter will be, be with us too. So we're going to have a... This is going to be our first 
pretty darn big fleet, I mean, comparably, that we've done so far in this playthrough, and I'm pretty excited to, to do it. So, that being said, I'm going to let you guys go here. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share the video. And we'll see you in the next episode with our assembled fleet. Bye.